Um, Zach and um, Colin, when talking about this film, both talked about, they both, in separate, <clears throat> excuse me, in separate interviews, they both used the same words, which was, um, Peter and the camera were like a fly on the wall. Yeah. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit in terms of your style of filmmaking and, and how it... I mean, every story demands to be told in its own way. This story, for it to be new and immediate and important and, frankly, worthwhile telling, had to be told with a kind of immediacy and power as if it was happening now. I wanted the camera and the lens to have a kind of psychological profile. It focuses like a person, it moves. The whole movie feels accidental and raw and as if it's unfolding. Nothing feels designed. And that's true in the actual way I was using the camera and lensing and focusing, trying to create a sense of disorientation and panic. You know, it's all a trick, right? Because it's, it's not an eye, it's not a person. But, you know, my cinematographer, Barry Aykroyd, is such a genius at these kind of things. He, more than any other DP I know, he creates a sense of almost like battlefield reality, like you're there. And, uh, and we pushed in, and I would sometimes take Barry or my other camera operator and literally physically move them. I would see something happening with the cast. I would see something happening unexpected between two actors, or even between the actor and himself. And, I would lit and I, of course I can't speak because we're rolling. I would literally take the camera and move it in a way that no one knew what was happening and what we were capturing. And it was a kind of extraordinary thing. I think some of the most powerful moments in the movie were not written, they just mm -hmm. happened. It, it felt like that, particularly in the hospital sequences, yeah. very visceral and very, and, and very, very fast. Um, in addition to this, uh, this amazing cast, you also had a really strong producing team. The movie was produced by Playtone, which is Tom Hanks and Gary Getzman. Can you talk a little bit about uh, working with Tom and Gary, prepping the movie, how involved they were? You know, look, Tom, as an actor, is an icon. You know, he, he represents a kind of American integrity that we probably haven't felt since Jimmy Stewart and Gregory Peck. Um, as a producer, he's a different guy. He is, he's informed by that sensibility and that integrity, but he's, he's like a focused taskmaster. And he was over my shoulder and next to me for five years working on this screenplay. And he would ke keep himself and me and the movie honest. I mean, three days before he rolled camera, maybe the 20th time I sat down with him on the screenplay and the cast and thinking about it, we went through it page by page, 72 hours before we shot. And he was saying, are we sure about this? How do we feel about this? Can we prove this? Do we know this to be true? I think it was a conversation with himself as much as me. His standards are unparalleled. Then he went off into Broadway while the movie was happening and Gary, his partner, stepped in and was there for every frame and just an incredible partner and, uh, and friend during the whole thing. All right, last question. Um, what do you hope audiences take away from this film? I hope that when they watch this film, no matter how old they are, they will experience the Kennedy assassination as if for the first time. Not 50 years ago, but today, right now. All right, I lied. Not last question, because okay. I'm going to ask one more. Um, when you and I were talking yesterday, you talked a little bit about, um, you made some connections between how people felt on 9-11 and how people felt on the day of the assassination. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, in 9-11, I was, I was actually, I lived very close to the towers. I was very nearby. Um, I was actually finishing a story um, about Serbia and the war. And I saw the first plane hit, and I just became a participant in the street. I started walking down toward the towers, and the second plane hits, and then the buildings go down. And I remember as if being sucked out to sea in this wave of panic and disorientation. I'm an experienced reporter, and I was paralyzed. I remember when the towers went down, I found myself on my knees in the middle of uh, 7th Avenue. And I've seen a lot as a reporter. And that idea of the oxygen being sucked out of the world and being overtaken by a wave was what I wanted to apply to the Kennedy assassination, that exact same sense of disorientation. You know, when he was killed, they didn't know if it was the Russians. They didn't know if it was an invasion. They didn't know if there was a coup happening. 
you know, our Air Force mobilized, our, our ICBMs, our nuclear weaponry was all mobilized. Everything started to go into action. We were very close to war. We didn't just didn't know who we were going to fight. And it's the same in 9-11. The whole country flexed its muscles and, and got ready.